Hello JavaScript folks, this is chapter 5 and 6. We're looking at facts 1, which is the, on page 167. And this, the purpose of this exercise is to demonstrate ways to show and hide special elements uh, on, in the uh, HTML code. For instance, we can click on what is jQuery and this div which contains uh, more information on the title uh, pops up and when you click again it collapses uh, by CSS uh, taking control of its class it, uh, it, it hides it and this works with uh, all of them it makes this exercise makes use of arrays uh, events, dome, and functions, the more work with functions. So we're going to start by looking at the HTML. HTML has, the body has one section containing all the code. The section is divided in three uh, fairly equal size parts of uh, which repeat themselves. H2 is going to contain all the titles of those expansion expand, expanding expanding menus and uh, the divs are going to contain the information under the title and that's it that gets repeated three times note that uh, there are some classes here uh, the h2 has a class of plus which means um, you can see this grayed out plus and when you click on it it turns into a grayed out minus which will be controlled by the CSS attribute here the div has a class of closed and so if we look at the CSS for that uh, h a div with a class closed has a display none and the div open has a display block. And looking at the h2, we got the plus, which calls a background of URL from the folder images uh, of plus dot ping. And there's a no repeat, and it's set on the left. And you got the h2 minus, same thing. So that's it's the HTML for the application and from now on JavaScript is going to make use of that. Here it is, JavaScript. At the bottom we have our, uh, our good old dollar sign function which when we call the dollar sign we provide it a, an ID of a particular element that we are interested in and this function will return to the dollar sign a document get element by ID so that will take us to the memory location where the element exists and we're going to be able to modify it window on load we saw that last time when the page is done downloading to our browser this function will execute it begins by using our dollar sign calling fax into a variable fax which is uh, the h1 no uh, sorry is the section section called fax which contains all the codes so from this element Using DOM elements, we can access any of these. Uh, so we are making use of facts right away. Uh, this is the section, remember. From the section, we can get elements by tag name. And yes, we can get all the, ta all the elements of tag H2. And they will return uh, a list of these h2 elements into this variable which now makes this variable an array 
an array is a variable which can contain uh, multiple elements. And so when uh, you learn that in chapter 5, and here's an example. Okay, we are creating a new variable, h2 node, which we're going to use in a second. We are engaged in a for loop with a var of i starting at 0. And we're simply going to cycle through all the items in this array. And the way it's done, as shown in chapter 5, is that you can call the array a name dot length. And that tells us exactly how many items are in the array. And this loop will simply uh, cycle through as long as i is still less than a number of elements. Remember, it starts at 0. The first element is 0. So if there are 5 elements, is going to still be less than 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, because that's the length. Well, the length will be 5. Therefore, i can never be 5. It's going to be happy st stopping at 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And now we're grabbing each element by using the square brackets, which is the way we call elements in an array. Square bracket, and then the number of the element, starting with 0, element 0 is going to be uh, populating this variable which only takes one element at a time, right? Okay, so what we're doing in this for loop here is that we need to give some on-click events to all the titles and all the titles, as you know, are uh, h2 h2 elements, right? This is a title. We're going to make that a link with this for loop. So in the loop, we are calling h2 node, which is our, the, our first h2 element. And we're going to use it's an event for it called onClick, which responds, as you know, to simply a click from the mouse. And this onClick is assigned a function. And remember, and you may have noticed already by studying this, that a function does not actually execute when you assign it to an event. All we're doing uh, assigning this function to the onClick is we're showing onClick the beginning location of where the code lies and the code is here. But the code will not be executed actually until somebody clicks on this particular node. Okay, it's very important to know to understand that because this is why inside of this function we have to use this. Um, this is a reserved variable from JavaScript and it actually points to the to the present item. In other words, when you point at this link because now it turns into this hand, the variable this uh, in JavaScript uh, is actually has contains the location of this link. So when the on click is activated, this function is executed, and this is going to return the location of the particular link being pointed to right now, and we're going to assign that location to a variable called h2. And now we can start asking questions. If h2 and we're going to get the attribute called class and we're going to have Java, JavaScript uh, check out whether it's a plus or a minus and if it's a plus we intend on setting that attribute class to minus so that uh, which is simply a nice uh, visual clue for most of us who are used to plus and minus in those types of events. Else, uh, h2 is going to set the attribute to class plus because if it's, mm, if it's not a plus, it must be a minus, therefore we want it to be a plus. This is a toggle switch. And, and also, mo most important, is that we want to uh, unhide what follows. Therefore, you take h2 and we're interested in the following element, which happens to be that div, but we don't even need that because we just say 
next el next element, sibling. The sibling means that those are on the same level. So H2 and div are on the same level. It's not a child of the other, they're siblings. So the next element sibling is pointing to the div and we're going to get the, att to get the attribute for it uh, for the class and if it is set to close then we want to set it to open and as soon as that happens the CSS will take over and display that div else it must be already open therefore we're going to close it that's the code. Uh, not extremely complicated, but uh, for new programmers, that will take some work. Uh, I want to show you one more thing. I don't think that we covered that in class yet, but the book says that if you want to look at the code, uh, the code is usually uh, displaying what has loaded originally. For instance, we see all the class plus uh, and the class closed. But if you modify that code by clicking on this, for instance, we know that this div no longer says close, it should say open. But if we do, uh, if we call the, the source, no, the normal way, this div will still show closed uh, on this first on this first item which we just opened, and so the book just says it's just not possible to see new code, but it's not the case with Firefox. So I just want to show you that if you want to see the new code which has been generated by JavaScript, all you have to do is simply select the item and use your control key or your right click on that selection say view selection source and now you're going to see the class has now turned to minus and this one is turned to open so just want to clarify that slight error from the book thank you very much and good luck